Good evening, and welcome to the second television show spotlighting the St. Genevieve Museum. My name is Stephanie Goodell, and I am Director of Operations for the Museum. Joining me this evening are two board members, Rich Rebecca and Robert Wolk. How are you guys? Excellent. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Steph, I'd like to start off, and we'll probably start it and end it with this phrase, and that is that what we're doing for the museum is not for us. And we're actually doing this for the city and the county of St. Genevieve. We have somebody that's willing to come in and enhance our museum, give us a tool to take the museum off of being on the welfare row, if you will. Uh, for the past 80 years, our directors have done a fantastic job of begging for enough money to keep that museum open and keep it running. What we're doing is we have finally been given the opportunity to have somebody come in and bring an attraction that we will draw many people to town. So we're taking an item that's been on the welfare rolls and we're putting it onto a paying and a piece of the community that will function and pay its own way. So Rich and I and the rest of the board and yourself, Steph, we don't do this for us because we don't get paid. Uh, Rich, you want to comment a little bit about the 501c3 and how that works so sure. people understand that? Part? Sure. We're, we're a, uh, we have a 501c3 uh, designation, uh, which first and foremost means anybody that uh, joins the capital campaign makes a donation. It's a, a, a tax to, in like 99% of the instances, um, it's a tax deductible contribution. Um, but being a self-sustained, standing on our, our own two feet type of um, uh, environment, living in that kind of environment, uh, we're able to do um, stuff like gifting. Uh, right, you know, writing a check from the pool of money that gets accumulated over the year to a graduating um, senior boy and girl from uh, both both high schools, and um, uh, taking into consideration those uh, high school age kids that are homeschooled, uh, those kids that meet the Missouri standards for high school graduation as uh, homeschooled individuals, they will also have the opportunity to uh, fill out a form, write an essay, and um, could they could be awarded a gift. Um, we have a, a scholarship uh, program uh, in place, uh, which simply means that uh, being a former uh, a high school teacher, I know that one of the first things that's removed from, from budgets are transportation costs. Right. And then the followed shortly behind that um, are the field trips for schools. Well, in scholarshiping, we have a vehicle, again, it's part of the 501c3 designation, that allows a superintendent, a uh, assistant superintendent, a building principal, um, it allows them to write a letter to us asking if there's any way we can help uh, that school um, to come down and visit for the day? And the answer is uh, yes. Um, and uh, an inner city school uh, up in St. Louis uh, will have the same opportunity to um, experience the Museum Learning Center uh, just like the kids that are able to walk across the street from Valley or down the road from uh, uh, the St. Jen uh, two uh, schools. So, Steph, now to go back to what you started with. <clears throat> Several years ago, we identified that we had to do something with the museum to make it self-sustaining, pay its own way. Uh, and we formed a steering committee to research that. Our museum board identified that we needed it, and then the museum board also agreed that we needed a steering committee, a subcommittee, to look into this. So we formed a subcommittee called the steering committee. Mm -hmm. And after we'd looked into it, we said, there's a lot of items that we can do, but all of those items cost money, and how do we get a return on our investment? So we set out to research what was available to help us make the museum be self-sustaining. And we looked at a lot of options, starting with how can we add on to the building that's existing? Because we don't have enough space 
and people that came to the museum, one of the questions that we would ask is, when was the last time you were in our museum? Right. And you know, most of the people said, well, it's been 10, 15, 20 years, and mm -hmm. nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time that I was in the museum was whenever you hired me. So okay. that just goes to show, I mean, there's not much traffic through it, even right. with the local residents. So we wanted, we wanted to look at how can we get people to come back to the museum, what can we do? And in this process, we were vetting different ideas, uh, adding on to the building, looking at other locations. We were doing all of this and we were introduced to a, a person that owns the studio called Lost World Studios. Mm -hmm. And they have a collection that is a four to five million dollar collection that they're actually looking for a place to bring their collection and have their legacy, because they've spent their entire lifetime building that legacy. They're looking for a place to have, to bring their collection to where it can be displayed and their legacy can live on. So all of a sudden now we have a drawing card, somebody that has all of these items that they can bring to our museum and supplement our museum, the stuff that's already in the museum. And, and Rich will talk about this, but we're not looking to get rid of the stuff that's in the museum. We're looking to enhance what we have and supplement it with what the Darrells will be bringing. Because I know a lot of people were concerned that it was just going to be a dinosaur museum. So yeah. that's pretty comforting to know that the stuff in the current museum is going to be brought over as well. Right. I had a call last night from a gentleman in Leavenworth, Kansas, that donated the uh, <clears throat> meteorite that's oh, in yeah. the museum. Mm -hmm. And he had heard the uh, story that we were going to move the museum. And he was worried that the stuff that was in the existing museum would be sold off or something. That's not going to happen. Right. The gentleman that is coming in to be the curator of the museum, Guy Darrell, who has spent his life doing this, is actually going to take the stuff that we have in our museum and chronologically put it in the order that it would happen. And Rich, you want to hit on that a little bit then? Yeah, um, it's, it's somewhat of a, a, of a unique uh, um, situation. Um, you know, here, here we were trying to figure out what we were going to do, you know, once all of the committees that were formed came to the same conclusion. You know, we either have to add on to the existing building, mm -hmm. and that was option A. Mm -hmm. Option B, find a building for sale near it, or option C, find something huge because we, as Robert said, we just didn't have the space to move items around, to change displays, to have social events there. And we were, we were in the beginning, we were very aware of how sensitive the issue was about the physical structure. Well, there's, there was no way. There was no way we could take everything that we had in our closet and move it out on the floor with what we currently have on display, plus the three to five million dollars worth of artifacts and fossils that you know that Guy Darrow and his wife are bringing mm -hmm. to this union. Uh, so that's that was it. We we couldn't we couldn't stay in the current building. Right. Looking for at a, there were other buildings for sale. But we shot holes through that idea because we didn't want one museum to play second fiddle to this other museum. We didn't want one museum to uh, one physical structure to be uh, that people would look at it as if it were an annex. And nine out of ten people would look at the newer, you know, uh, rehab the building as the main building. So what was what would happen is people would be drawn to the science component and not give the historical component any any credence. So that's when we, as a committee, decided, okay, uh, we're going to have to get the word out. We're going to have to, uh, you know, make people understand this is for the best. And that was when we. Um, sat down with the Ketting family and we're looking at a 
over an 11,000 square foot building on two floors. Um, that doesn't count the space in the basement that's going to be utilized. Mm -hmm. And you know, later on in the program, we'll we'll get into you know some of the conceptual things that you know we uh, we we discussed and when we sit down with the architect, you know, we have our list of priorities. Um, the building also comes with the alleyway and some auxiliary buildings right near it. So it was... Uh, a great the, improvement. It will be. It will be. I mean, if we, if we just, and again, this isn't to, to um, uh, d downplay the importance of the structure that we're in now, right. but if we were to go into the Ketting building right now, move all of our stuff over as is, as much in the way of the Ketting building needing some TLC mm -hmm. and a complete overhaul, the second we put our displays up in there will be a vast improvement. Right. So that says something to the fact that, yeah, you know, we, we, we have to move. We, we've got to, you know, so stick with our guns. How did you guys find the Kettings? Did well, you know whether it was for sale? Or? Ac actually, I subconsciously knew it was for sale because uh, my wife, my wife's family and the Kettings family are, uh, there's bloodlines there. Okay. So um, when it comes to the negotiations and the, you know, I kind of take, take a step back because the last thing I want to do is being the new kid on the block. I've only been in this town for five years. Um, I don't, I don't want any, anybody saying, oh, there's a conflict of interest there. There's a conflict of interest. So Robert could address that better than me because as chairman, um, and I hope I don't embarrass him, we're not here today talking to you about this if it wasn't for his drive, if it wasn't for his dedication. And this isn't to say uh, Mary's aunt, uh, Mary's aunt, uh, uh, Dodo Ketting, was a former um, um, chair of the committee. Her, her late husband, John, a chair of the committee. This isn't to disparage any of the former chairs, but if it wasn't for his level of dedication, um, his knowledge of uh, his business background and knowledge, uh, we, we wouldn't be here today. We would be, uh, he would end up joining the long list of um, presidents and chairs who just sustained beg, it. borrowed, it, yeah, yeah, beg, borrowed, and Can not necessarily steal, but, yeah. but you know, paid their way. So I'm so. going to take Definitely. you back just for a second sure. then. Uh, step the steering committees. We started out with what we call a think tank. Okay. And that had a, about 12 or 15 community leaders in it. And we talked about what we needed to do and introduced them to ideas. They helped direct us. And then once we locked them with the Lost World Studios, then we formed a steering committee and we hired a company out of St. Louis called Meyer Joist and Associates to help direct our capital campaign. We now have identified that we need to move the museum primarily because we don't own that building. And there's about 15,000 square feet down there, and Step, since you've been working there, you've been in the closet, have you not? <laughs> I have been in the closet. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of items that are in that closet that are not on display, right? Correct. There's, there's incredible stuff in that closet that I just found yesterday that's not on display and that should be. Definitely. So you're finding those items that we, we, the existing board, have not even seen yet. Mm -hmm. So that's not doing justice to the people who donated stuff to the museum to share with the uh, people of St. Genevieve. That's not doing justice to it. So we said, we've got to expand this facility. Then the Lost World Studios come to us and said, we'll bring our collection to your place if you do two things for us. Number one, give us a very nice professional building because we have a professional collection of artifacts. So we'll bring those, and we're not asking you for money. We're going to bring those to you, put a, place them in your museum, be your curator, set the displays up in a very professional manner, and number two, give us a board that understands how to run a business. We don't want to run the business. We own the artifacts. We'll help you with the displays. We don't want to run the business. So give us a professional board. Give us the space. And we'll bring our stuff there. And if this union works out and you're doing your end, 
we eventually, as we move on, those artifacts may stay with your museum. And we've signed a contract with them stating just that. We can never sell their stuff. Right. If our museum ever shuts down, we have to donate that to another museum. It cannot be sold. Understandable. And it shouldn't be if it's of that historical significance. True. And, you know, they collected it to help educate people. And that is where they want to go. Uh, they want to bring their stuff here and help educate young minds on what it takes to be a geologist or a paleontologist or a collector. Archaeologist. Yeah. Uh, preservationist. Yeah. So that's what they want to do. And, and thank goodness we run on to them. So now we've got a steering committee. We identified that we needed a capital campaign. We identified what it was going to take to restore that building to the quality of the DuBerg Center, which the, the uh, Darrells are very familiar with. They mm -hmm. were around while that was being restored. And it's very beautiful. Yes, it is. So that's what we're going to do with the Ketting Building, the same thing. And again, thank God for the Kettings. They've been very good to us. They've been most generous in right. helping us get to this point. So the steering committee then hired its Mar Joyce. We set up a capital campaign. We got a direction now. We know the building that we want to purchase. We know what we need to do to it. We know the uh, people that are going to bring the stuff in that will draw people to St. Genevieve. And the Darrells currently go around the United States this Lost World Studios, mm -hmm. they make a living by setting up displays uh, in uh, gardens, like uh, Orlando Gardens is where I think they're going at the, the, the end of this week. After Florida, mm -hmm. uh, they've been to Powell Gardens, they've been to the mm -hmm. San Antonio Bot uh, Botanical Garden, McGee Garden, McGee Garden, yeah, they, anywhere, any place that needs a draw, mm -hmm. And this was the rumors that were floating out there <laughs> that we're going to have a dinosaur museum. Right. The draw of the dinosaurs. Yes. And these places have the Darrows bring their own dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. uh, Guy Darrow, by trade, is an artisan. He makes full size, full scale replicas of dinosaurs. He's also a self-taught archaeologist and paleontologist. He may not have the sheepskin mm -hmm. like some of his um, cohorts do, but he is so well thought of in the uh, paleontology and archaeology circles of this world that this gentleman actually has his own storage drawers in the thermostatically controlled basement of the Smithsonian Institute. And well, that's impressive. Extremely impressive. Smithsonian is huge. Oh, it, <laughs> yeah. Understanding. And, 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 and he is one of the world's leading owners of one item. He's the only person in the entire world with a specific item. He's the only person in the entire world with a specific item. He's the only person, and you can go on and on and on. And he said on more than more than one occasion, some of the biggest museums in the world would give their right arm to have what I currently have, you soon will have. Right. So... Even to go know. back to the garden, um, the St. Louis Botanical Garden host some of his work as well. That's a little closer to home that people may recognize as well. Oh yeah, and he's been on uh, he's been on uh, Nat Geo specials. Mm -hmm. He's been on um, I, I don't want to say the Science Network a History Channel. Some of his work was the he's um, he's been on uh, television like the Today Show mm -hmm. um, with his with his work, but. That's his job. Right. This is his hobby. This, this, this is what he's been collecting artifacts and fossils, cataloging um, what he has found. Um, this is what he truly loves to do, and we're going to be the we're going to be the recipients of. We are putting together a union of a historically 
impressive, mm -hmm. although small building, with three to five million dollars worth of science type items. And we we really, without without sounding egotistical, we really feel that we could have the the the, the best family oriented um, place to visit between St. Louis and Memphis. So Steph, here we are. Now we've got the gentleman. We've lined you up with him. We've told you about him. Mm -hmm. He wants to get off the road. He wants to quit doing those shows and he wants to come in and be the curator of this museum and open a learning center. He wants to grab young minds and bring them into this world. And you know, he says, you can get a lot off of the internet but there's nothing like coming up and touching a trilobite, exactly. actually running your hand across the trilobite. And uh, that is where he's going. He wants to come in and be the educator and set this up as a learning center, which is big for us. That's the point that we were driving to. We want this place to be a learning center so that schools within a 150 mile radius will be able to come in and take field trips and come down here and actually have things that are designed for the class that they're studying in school, they can come down here and have a specific course on that mm -hmm. and bring them to the museum, to the learning center, and run them through there. And everyone loves hands-on stuff in general. It is. It's like, great. It's the best. It's the, as, a, as a former teacher, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, it's hands-on learning is, is head and shoulders uh, better yeah. in the long run than just me telling you something, you reading a, a little plaque or, or, or some signage. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can use any of your five senses, you're going to remember. So now we move from where we were at. Mm -hmm. We got the uh, <clears throat> museum board, the steering committee together, and the first thing that we th felt that we needed to do was redesign our mission statement. So uh, and. Rich was in charge of that, so Rich, tell us about the mission statement. Basically, a mission statement, the shorter it is, the easier it is for people to remember. Mm -hmm. The more succinct you can be, um, the more impressive um, what it is you're trying to do um, can be done. So we threw a bunch of everybody, you know, Sometimes, sometimes dictatorship is the best form of democracy, right. but not all the time. So everybody involved with this project um, put down on paper, you know, what they what they thought uh, was the best in mission statement. And we, I've done a lot of mission statement work in my day, so um, we took everybody's uh, offerings. Um, the best way to come to um, the best possible idea for something is to shoot holes in what you have, mm -hmm. and generally speaking, that that has the less, the least amount of holes in it. That's the one you run with. Yeah. And what we came up with as a as a collective group was was something that has been going on since the museum opened its first doors. Eighty plus years. Eighty plus years. We, we realized that for 80 plus years, the legacy that was happening was the preservation of items mm -hmm. so that future generations, you know, would be able to, you know, enjoy what's there. Okay. So basically, uh, you know, our mission statement is to continue the legacy of preserving the past for future generations. That will appear on business cards, that will appear on letterheads, that will appear on uh, any, any, uh, information, you know, any informational items that go out to, in the general public. Mm -hmm. Plus, it is the credo for everything that we do. So when we are sitting at the steering committee table and looking at things, if it doesn't serve that mission statement, we're not doing what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the whole gamut together. We've got our mission statement. So we put together the capital campaign. We figured out how much we have to have to do that. And we started a capital campaign. Uh, we're at the point where we've identified it. We put together a brochure. 
we didn't do it haphazardly. In fact, some people think we're doing it quite slowly. But we got one chance at this, and we got to do it right. Right. So we interviewed the mayor. We interviewed the county commissioners. We interviewed the top educators in St. Genevieve. We went to the uh, uh, teachers in all the schools. We went to different communities, and we presented what we were trying to do, and then we got their input and told us what they would think about it and how important it is to them and what the learning center would mean to the community and surrounding communities. So once we had that, then we put together the brochure, and now we started the capital campaign. And um, n while all this is going on, mm -hmm. our little history museum is still collecting items. People were still getting phone calls. I saw something in the newspaper. I heard something on the radio. I've got something you may be interested in. Mm -hmm. So even though we're in this transition period of change, we're still doing what has been done for 80 years. Mm -hmm. We're still preserving. And, and Steph, you're, and you're living proof of that. The, you were yeah. talking about the uh, Santa Claus from the Darlu shop and yes. the draw. Yeah. So you were there, you saw what happened. And so the St. Genevieve Museum, part of what we're trying to achieve is that learning center and then we wanna tie up and be partners with every group in St. Genevieve. How can we enhance their business and what they're doing? Mm -hmm. So we talked about Guy and what he does when he goes out to these locations and sets up his displays. He averages 30,000 people a month to come into his displays that's why they bring him in. And they've had him back two and three times to the same location. A month. He brings a in month. over 30,000 people a month. So then we started looking at it and said, what would happen if we brought 25 additional thousand people to St. Genevieve over the course of a year? Mm -hmm. What would that do for the businesses in St. Genevieve? What would it do for the economy of St. Genevieve? What would it do for preserving what we have and grow into the future. So we looked at that. That would boost it tremendously. Exactly. So, and, and then we tie up, like, that was the art guild where the Darlu shop, Santa Claus was. Yes. That, that was a fantastic drawing card to that uh, location. And you're a member of the art guild, I believe, are you not? I am, yes. So uh, they told us it was the best turnout they've had. Mm -hmm. Now, it may have been due to the location, but I don't think that Darlu Santa Claus heard a thing. <laughs> it did not. Setting not in the, the window, because a lot of people come by to take pictures. In fact, we got calls after uh, that was over, and, and you went down with me. Mm -hmm. We had to plug Santa in over the Christmas holidays so people could go down and take pictures with it. I it's had, a drawing card. I had people on Facebook commenting on our posts about the Darlu Santa. Yeah. And they were wondering like where it was and if it would be running over the course of a few days. So it's everybody loves it. So we had to go down and plug it in. Yep. So so we partnered with the art guild mm -hmm. and it increased the amount of people. We're currently out at the uh, uh, community, community center. Community center, yeah. And we, we've got, we still have the uh, pottery display um, for, um, Anybody that hasn't been out there yet, um, we set up again. Uh, this was through, you know, Guy Doris Darrow and uh, Lost World Studios. Uh, we've got this amazing, brand new. Um, was it mahogany? Kind of a reddish right. mahogany uh, display base, case. the display case with the glass top that slides over. I mean, this isn't a you know, I didn't make this in my garage or somebody in in somebody's shop. This Not is a, <laughs> no, no. This is a solid piece of of uh, high end craftsmanship, and there's uh, close to a dozen um, uh, Indian uh, pot pottery vessels, water vessels, uh, liquid vessels, um, cooking vessels, uh, all on display, all categorized, all all dated. That's been at the community center for a couple, three months at least. Um, 
the dinosaur that was um, on display at the DeBerg Center uh, over the uh, holiday walk, the holiday stroll. Mm -hmm. um, that was moved out for the community center's Christmas party. So people in the community, I think little by little, are starting to see that, hey, we, we want to we wanna be a player. Um, we want to be a player uh, and we want to, I guess the best thing to say is uh, we want to be, we want to play well in the sand with everybody. And gravity's taken over here. And so Steph, again, and then you were part of the dinosaur and we want to make sure we get that point across because so many people say, what does dinosaurs have to do with the town and our history museum? Well. Whether we like it or not, dinosaurs are part of St. Genevieve. They were here. Oh, yeah. In fact, when they were uh, working at a local construction site, they bore a hole about 35 feet in the ground, and they brought up a bone from a mastodon. You ever come across something like that during construction? <laughs> and it never did. But it, I mean, it's right here. So yeah, it's part of our right. history. And what Rich said earlier, whether we like it or not, that's the drawing card to get people into the museum. We'll be so much more. But those creations that he has made mm -hmm. are going to be on display and will be changed out on a regular basis. Part of what we have identified is that uh, we will design the museum to entice people to come in. We're hoping three to five times a year people will be in the museum. And it'll operate a lot like the community center does bypass an annual pass and you can come into all the events mm -hmm. and so the first floor is going to be designed that you will walk in through a gift shop and there'll be a full-blown gift shop with uh, t-shirts and different items that we're trying to look for that are very unique we're not trying to take any business away from anybody but we want things that are unique to the museum environment that they can buy as they enter the museum or exit the museum and have as a reminder of their stay there mm -hmm. or their visit there. So those items are being uh, vetted now that we'll have in our gift shop. And then you'll enter into the museum proper and you'll actually take a stroll through history from the single cell to the multi cell to the dinosaurs to everything. And Lost World Studios have been around this for all their life. That's how they make a living. So they are actually going to set it up as a walk through history on that first floor. And then you want to take it from there, Rich? Yeah, then um, in, uh, hope, what, what we're hoping and, you know, in, in the course of the year, um, while, while we're focused on one thing, we've got our eye toward, you know, something else so that during the year, in, a, in addition to everything that's been said so far, we've also started generating um, plans. We know that the main exhibit space will be on the first floor. We don't know its official name yet, but we know that's where a visitor's trip through the museum begins. Mm -hmm we would like to have somewhere in and along the corridors um, some living fossils, you know, aquariums with turtles that are native to St. Genevieve County, um, fish, amphibians, um, snakes. Um, I'm not a um, biologist, so I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but your basic critters Right. that can live comfortably in an aquarium, we'd like to put them on display, you know, as well. And I was talking to Guy Darrow recently, and he said to me, he says, you know that aquarium idea that you've been bouncing around? He says, I've already spoken to a guy who specializes in making aquariums. He said, and I'm thinking about a traditional aquarium as you're looking at it this way. But when you look at it this way, there's a brontosaurus or some sort of dinosaur with his neck down drinking water and the fish are swimming below it just like it would happen. Right. You know? So he says, I've got to work out a few things, he says, because you know, 
the kind of fish that would swim when that dinosaur was alive are different than the ones swimming in the tank. He said, but you know something, uh, he said, maybe we can, you know, we can work something Tiny out. Tiny details. And then, and then um, of course, that it's fully interactive and, 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 and handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. Second floor is the one that gets me a little more, as, again, as a former educator. Um, the learning center concept. The learning technically begins when the person reads that first little placket on the first floor. Mm -hmm. But we want to have a resource center um, on steroids, if you will. We want, we want people to be able to see something on the first floor and with a cell phone capture the barcode that's near it and somebody up on the second floor with our computer banks can begin research for that person or at least get a computer ready for that person to do his or her own research. Um, we we want to tie into, if at all possible, uh, the genealogy uh, mainframes at places like Temple Square in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. um, at, uh, when I knew the the person that oversaw that, uh, she told me it was the largest, the largest form of, uh, you know, um, um, research that a person can do. You know, looking up their their family roots. Yeah. Now, we want to, we would like to see TVs up there. Hey, you know, having a satellite dish on the roof will mean we're already paying for shows like the History Channel, uh, the Science Network, uh, Nat Geo. Mm -hmm. Nat Geo Wild, even though other than the, the fish, we're not going to have anything that, you know, that's, that's wild in there. But the point is, somebody can take a break, watch a show that's maybe pertinent to um, a, a classroom lesson. Mm -hmm. Having a satellite dish on the roof allows us to tape something. So if we know ahead of time that... Uh, a, a teacher over at the Valley School uh, needs a unit on um, a, astronomy, okay? Well, you know what? Uh, at 2 o'clock on, on Tuesday afternoon, um, there's an hour show. We can tape that. We can tape that, and we can send it over to her. We could tape that, and she could bring her class over. We could tape it so she could come and learn a little more so that she in turn or he in turn can go back and 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 teach you know th that class mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to have an amphitheater uh, an amphitheater with your basic stadium seating um, you're not going to be there for any more than maybe two hours so it doesn't have to be you know comfortable cushy chairs like this mm -hmm. and the stadium and hopefully uh, the amphitheater uh, will be small enough so guest lecturers can come in, yet large enough where through a separate admission people can come back after closing and watch any of the Indiana Jones movies that were shown, any of the uh, Jurassic Park movies that were shown. And all of this is kind of it's all education based it's all the thread is you know learning that that one common thread weaves itself through everything and because of all of this it'll open up the doors for formal mentoring you know we can see and identify a kid that gets that's all jazzed up you know if 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 a junior in high school comes in with his his or her class and then they come back on their own mm -hmm. and then you see them you know outside asking questions well you know what that's someone that you identify that has an interest and a desire and we could match that person up you know with somebody that's on the museum staff or that's part of uh, any one of the uh, the, the committees uh, that we've formed and you know hope that um, you know true mentoring happens and, and I, I don't want to I don't want to downplay uh, anything that goes on uh, in this town but 
I for one would truly like to let the kids K to 12 know that as pristine and as bucolic and as nice as St. Genevieve is, there's a whole big wide world outside of the St. Gen County that kids, you know, should be exposed to. Right. That's not to say that you turn your back on the town you grew up in, but you know what? You, you can always come back if you want. Exactly. But that's that start, that educational start, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 could very well begin uh, all on the second floor. So now we're on the building. second floor. We have identified areas that uh, his room where he's going to do the education, uh, the shows, and the uh, center, uh, the movie center. Up there, we'll also have a room that's called the mining room and tells the story of mining in St. Genevieve and the geology that has made St. Genevieve what it is today. There, there are great stories. You know, there's two towns in this town. There's one town on top of the ground, and there's another town that's under the ground. They right. both run every day, all day long, but people don't see the one under the ground. Mm -hmm. And we want to tell that story about the mining in St. Genevieve and the impact it's had on St. Genevieve and the history of St. Genevieve. And we have a, a mine that's underground. We've got one that has strip mined. Uh, we've got tire rock stone that has a hole that's about 250 feet below the Mississippi River and they're only about two football fields away from the Mississippi River. That is amazing to be 250 feet lower than the Mississippi River. We want to tell those stories. We want to have videos that tell the story of Lure Brothers and what they've accomplished, of Lawast, of Mississippi Line, of Wholesome. We want to tell those stories in the mining room. So we will have a mining room. We'll have an agricultural room. We'll have a St. Genevieve room that's specific for the history of St. Genevieve itself. Mm -hmm. So we're not losing the flavor of St. Genevieve. We're building it into the weave of history as you go through the museum. But the St. Genevieve room will have specifics for just St. Genevieve. Right. Um, any, oh, oh, the, the family families. room. Families. The family room. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will have a room where people can come in, the Goddell family can come in and tell the history of the Goddell family. Mm -hmm. And you would have the room for two or three months. And you could tell the story of the Goddells and bring in your artifacts and set up your displays and have that room. Again, what we're trying to do is bring people back into the museum more than once a year. Right. We'd like to see people come in three to five times a year. That would be awesome. And, you know, if people can tell the history of what they do for a living, there, there's people that have done great things out there at Mississippi Line. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable things that have been accomplished, but they have no way of showing their family, friends, relatives from out of town what they do for a living. They just know they work at a line plant. Yeah, not but, everybody can take a tour down in the mines and exactly. see it. Exactly. So if we've got a video going that tells that story, now they can bring, when they've got relation in, they'll bring them to town right. and take them up and show them that. So we're trying to design things that will bring people back. Uh, you mentioned earlier about each special events, um, maybe a birthday party for a kid. Mm -hmm. You've got a child that's 10, 12 Ooh. years old and they want to have a birthday party. You know what's huge back on the East Coast? What? Uh, the ocean? Uh, the, the, oh, that's really huge. Yeah. Okay. You know, Just guessing. Yeah, no, that's that's wicked huge. <laughs> but um, my daughter spent many a night sleeping under the dinosaurs in Boston's museum. Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the that the movie, the movie uh, night night in the museum. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, Stilla. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. That concept came from how many Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, small groups of people brings their sleeping bags in and they spend the night sleeping in the museum. Really? Yeah. And um, I mean, uh, with a small enough you know, group of uh, <coughs> kids, a, a couple of uh, uh, volunteer committee members and some parents that, do you want, want to hang out? Um, the kids bring their sleeping bags and they sleep all over the floor and you know some sleep underneath satin and you know some people sleep underneath the T-Rex and 
I mean, it's huge on the East Coast. I know that the Science Center does that for the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, so that would be neat to bring them back to St. Genevieve and focus it more on art. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's truly, this is truly, truly an amazing project. And in the course of the year, I can't tell you, it's at least a dozen, a dozen different forms of communication. Ha we, we've blanketed not just St. Genevieve, but Farmington and St. Louis with communications of um, everything that uh, we, we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, these forms of communications, you know, uh, Robert and I uh, have done radio commercials, both uh, radio spots, not commercials, but radio spots, uh, both in Farmington um, and St. And, and St. Genevieve. Um, Chad Hello Speaker, Guy Darrow. yeah, Guy Darrow came with a, to Farmington. Um, Chad Speaker has been instrumental in uh, Farmington, um, helping us get our word out, mm -hmm. both through his airways and the website for his radio station. Chad sees the value of what it is we're attempting to do, because. There aren't that many hotel rooms in St. Genevieve. Right. There aren't that many restaurants that stay open after 8 o'clock at night. It's a, and this isn't to downplay St. Genevieve. This is a point that he sees right away, that in the 20 minutes that it takes you to drive west, or the 25 minutes, mm -hmm. you could. he sees it as an opportunity to capture the overflow mm -hmm. until... You know things happen. Um, in, Not to in mention what it does for their schools too, right? Because they're easily within the geographic e location e that e they e can to bring their schools come over. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one. And even whenever this does happen in St. Genevieve, it'll take time for the restaurants and hotels to catch up. But once they do, the revenue, the extra revenue, it's, will be incredible. It's, uh, I'm, I, I wouldn't be. I, I don't have any inside trade or information to share with anybody, but I'd be. I'd be surprised if um, hotel representatives aren't laying low in the shrubs, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on what's going on. Because there's an awful lot of real estate. I, I can't believe how big uh, St. Jen County would eat up from Boston's Inner Harbor mm -hmm. to the town I grew up in west of Boston. I mean, oh, it's, it's something huge. like down 55, it's something like close to 20 miles I from the it. two. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's almost <laughs> 20 miles from you if get you're halfway to Perryville and then you hit the Perryville line. Perry right, County. right. So from North St. Genevieve down to Perry County, mm -hmm. that span is from the Boston Inner Harbor to my hometown. I mean, that's wow. things are much more compacted on the East Coast. But right. I mean, this is a this is a large awful lot of real estate out there mm -hmm. and I, I'd be terribly surprised that you know somebody's not you know keeping an eye on uh, on, on our, our success okay. so we've 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 done as a committee we've done just about everything we could to get the message out wow we've we've we've, we've placed um, uh, um, essays in the newspaper uh, we've met with people that are Don Pritchett, the person who has ties with this TV um, station and the radio station mm -hmm. in town, has bent over backwards for us. Uh, we've been with him on the radio three, maybe four times. I think three for three, sure. Three, three for sure. Um, it was his idea, it was his idea that we do a monthly TV show. I mean, in addition to he pl he places everything that that we write mm -hmm. on the Sun Times News. He talks about everything that we do over the radio. He got us involved with having a, a monthly information show. Um, 
the guy couldn't do any more than he's currently doing. To, and, and who benefits from this? Well, in the long run, it'll be us mm -hmm. because we'll eventually see this through completion. On the short term, it's, it's the, well, let me put it this way. There are fewer naysayers today, mm -hmm. January 2017, than there were, say, January 2014. Mm -hmm. Much fewer naysayers. There's still the skeptics are out there. And, you know, God bless them because we're driven by the skeptics. Because we want to be the ones to say, <laughs> told you so. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> and, and I do. We want to mention Toby also at the St. Genevieve. Oh, oh and to Toby and Ashley. Uh, to Toby, we, s we sat down with Toby and, and uh, he immediately said, well, um, you know, I'm thinking you're going to need at least a quarter page ad you know and maybe I'll uh, I'll get my my design person to work along with it Ashley and um, you know Rich you've got a, a graphics background you two could get together and work something up. I didn't even have to do that she showed me right off the bat she sent me an email saying this is what I have in mind and it was the the ad the color ad that's been running in the newspaper up until um, this week I mean we are we're tying up loose ends for 2016, and we'll go back to that ad space as we have uh, announcements to make as we go forward. But I mean, she, uh, you know, under, under Toby's uh, leadership, uh, we're getting, you know, plenty of, plenty of ink. It's almost impossible for somebody in this community to still a believe we're going to be a dinosaur museum mm -hmm. all right it's almost incomprehensible that there's somebody in this community that hasn't hasn't come in contact with some form of communications explaining what we're going to do i mean the kettings even though we haven't bought the building the kettings allowed us to put some banners up announcing the c coming Mm -hmm. of the Museum Learning Center. That's exciting. It is, and it, 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 it gets people, uh, oh, oh, wow, oh, I guess it's really going to happen. It's the first tangible evidence that yeah. you can see around town I get, actually I, I, get, I guess it's going to happen. And it, do, it didn't hurt that, you know, the art guild asked if we had anything, in, you know, to help them with the wow factor. Mm -hmm. And you folks know about the, the, the Santa Claus, you know, obviously more than, than, than me. But I mean, that was a, uh, you know, right. and then the, the Dalusina. The, the final accolade we'd like to throw out there is the schools and yeah. what they have done to help us out and the promotion that we put together for your. Yeah, we did a, uh, we did a, uh, we asked the leaders of the, the schools and um, we think um, word got to the homeschooled age kids. We didn't want to have a contest to design uh, a logo, but if anything really came in outstanding, we would give it some consideration. Okay. Uh, but what we want, what we proposed to try to get as many people involved in this as we possibly could, the committee came up with an idea to have a, a design challenge. Mm -hmm. And that was to ask uh, any K through 12 student in the town of St. Genevieve on an eight by eight square piece of paper, do something that reflects the Museum Learning Center. Mm -hmm. And we got, you know, hangman type, you know, um, people, you know, walking and they're supposed to be early man. And we got beautiful pen and ink renditions of um, some of the older homes, but in the center of this St. Genevieve skyline is the museum. I mean, we, we have over 300. Whoa. Yes. You cataloged them. <laughs> I did. You know, you, you, I've got one more name for you. Do you? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll bring it by and uh, we'll, we'll add it to you. You've, you've yeah. got the database. so I do. Yeah, so, um, I mean, three, 300 kids mm -hmm. uh, participated 
in this design challenge. Which beautiful. means, which means at least, at least 300 parents or legal guardians mm -hmm. got wind of that. There you go. Again, I mean, the, the message is out there. Mm -hmm. and, Word and, of mouth. And, and, and yeah, exactly. So now we're going to bring you back. That's full circle. That's the events of 2016, but we're going to bring you back to where we started this. Okay. We're not doing this for us. Yes, the museum's going to get a beautiful building. We're going to have a person that brings in four or five million dollars worth of displays. But the benefactors of it is going to be the community and the county. We bring in 25,000 plus additional people to this town. They're going to spend money in this town. And if it's just 25,000, we anticipated it with the admission to the museum and our museum gift shop and the meals they'll eat in town and the gas they'll buy and different things that'll happen. We're going to bring in over 500,000 additional dollars of revenue to St. Jennifer. And you said that guy, Darrow, he usually pulls in about 30000 extra a month. Per month. So you are very well undershooting we're this. We're being very conservative. Very, 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 rejection. very careful and very conservative. But we're not doing it for us. Right. We think it'll be fantastic for the city and county of St. Genevieve, plus every merchant and every uh, person that's in business in St. Genevieve mm -hmm. will be a benefactor. The schools will be a benefactor and the people of St. Genevieve will be a benefactor. The one thing we, we, we have been careful with is we know, I mean, simple math, even for a, a blockhead like me when it comes to figures, mm -hmm. simple math indicates if you bring so many more people into the community, so much more spending will happen. The thing is, without a crystal ball, we can't go to, from merchant to merchant and give them a, hey, you're going to see a 20% uptick. You're going to see a 15. Oh, you're going to see 30. We, we can't do that. All we can say is there will be more people in the town. Mm -hmm. More people translate. And you can go right down the line. Okay. okay? Um, An extremely intelligent person wrote recently in the newspaper that the union of the historical building with Lost Will Studios artifacts and files is $1.15 million. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to cost. Okay? Right. The educational impact for our students and the financial impact for our town is priceless. Okay, that person had a has an awful lot of insight. I'd say so. I know. Okay. Like <laughs> yeah. So now, if you didn't know it was me, <laughs> throw that out there. Well, yeah. Well, hey, where's the pat? Where's the pat on my back? <laughs> I can't reach it, but there you go. <laughs> so that's pretty well the story that we came to tell tonight was what's happened in 2016. What's going to happen in 2017? We're going to complete our procurement process. We're about halfway there. Halfway. Okay. So now we need to continue the procurement process. Then we're getting a loan. We're going to go start with the construction of the building. And that's what happens once we get halfway. Yes. 50% we'll get the loan. We'll do and, grants. We'll and, do the rest of it. Right. And it should be noted that as small as a, com a community population-wise as St. Genevieve, we didn't feel comfortable, the eight or ten of us that are doing the capital campaign, we really didn't feel comfortable to blanket the entire community. Mm -hmm. in 2016. We were cautious, we were slow, we, we mentioned that three or four times. Um, had we tr attempted to do that, we may have exceeded that 50% already. Mm -hmm. And then th the other dominoes And we're getting ready to exceed our time, so. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're, 2017 is when we meet the other 50% of them. We identified 50% of the community in 2016. We're going to identify 50% in. Thank you and have a happy, healthy new year. Amazing. Thank Thanks you. So. Thank you. That just about wraps it up here.